Angular 19 is just around the corner and they have introduced this new primitive in signals called linked signals. Let's try it out and see when to use it. So we are running an application in which we have a bunch of users as tabs. So I could switch different users and I can also see their posts. So each user's posts are on the left. And if I click a particular post, then I also see the post details here, like the title and the body. But I also load more comments for each particular post. And you can also see a loader happening when that happens. So if I switch users I get posts for the user and if I click on a particular post I basically see their details and the comments as well now we have a situation here let's say I've selected this particular post and if I switch my user you still see the selected post and this is not what we want we want that whenever we change the user this becomes unselected or we have to select a post again to actually view it now let's have a quick look at the code the link to this code repository can be found in the description of this video and we are actually working in a branch named start so you need to do git checkout start and you'll be at this particular state of the code now if you look at the code here, you'll see that in the app folder, we have the app component and the app component is acting right now as a smart component because this has almost all the logic. And then we have some dumb components which only show information or emit outputs. They don't have any idea about the API calls or where the data is coming from. So in the app component, you will see we have three different important things. One, we have users. So we have a hard coded array of users that you can find right here. Then we have posts. So we retrieve a particular user's post when we go to their particular tab. And then we have comments which are of the selected post that we are viewing right now. So by default, the users are since hard coded, they can be assigned right here. Then we have two effects. One for getting the user's post. So whenever we have a change in the selected user, when we click a particular tab, then we make this API call to get the particular user's post. And then we assign it to the post signal. In this case, we also mark the loading to true and false on respective API calls. Then we have this effect, which triggers on whenever we change the selected post, which happens when we select a particular post from right here. And when that happens, we try to make this API call using the particular post ID to get the comments. And we assign that to the comments signal in this particular case. Now, what we want to do is to reset the selected post whenever we have a change in the selected user. Now you can do that pretty easily here where you can see that we have an effect that is already for a selected user. So whenever there's a selected user change, we basically need to just reset the particular selected post. So in here, I could just go ahead and say this dot selected post dot set. And here I could say null. If I do this, that's pretty nice. And if I go to the application, you can see that if I select the first user and go to the second one, you can see that it is unselected and now we see please select a post. This is awesome. However, that's not always the case. What happens if I don't have this effect at all and I still need to reset my variable or my signal in this case. So let's say hypothetically you are in a situation where you need to reset a signal based on another signals change. In that particular situation, you might say something like a reset selected post is an effect. So you create your own effect for that if one doesn't exist, of course. And then you can do this dot selected post dot set. And here you can say null. Is this some code that you've already seen or you might already have written? Well, I've seen this a couple of times. So what's happening right here is that this whole line here is just for the effect to be triggered. And this is the actual logic. Now, even though this works, this feels really wrong in terms of readability and for anyone who's coming to the project and seeing this line for the first time. And they would be like, what is this really? And one of the things that we used to do before when we are actually using an effect and we are setting a value of a signal is we had to do something like this, allow signal writes set to true. And this was primarily because writing a signal in an effect can lead to a lot of unexpected changes. And we had this before to just try to avoid this. But now this has been allowed after several discussions with the community and some decisions as well. So this is not required anymore, which means that this is okay. But I still feel that this is really, really bad when it comes to readability, where you need to act upon change of a particular signal and just set a value of another signal. Another approach that people usually take is to rather use something like a computed in this case. So if I do computed, then what would happen in this case is that you could change this to selected post and I would have to remove this guy from here. And then what I can do here is that I can still keep this selected user here, but then I would have to return the value from here to 
null something like this this means that whenever there's a change in the selected user i have the selected post set to null if we save this we have another problem and you might have seen already some examples of like don't use effect use computed instead but those are certain cases where you want to do that not always in this situation the biggest problem is since i'm only returning null here the value or the type of the selected post becomes null or a signal of null another problem is that this is a signal whereas selected user for example is a writable signal so this computed property is readable you cannot set anything to it but what happens when i want to select a particular post by clicking here i can't do that anymore because the signal is now a read-only signal and that is a problem that you see right here as well when i do a post click i can't really set it because it's yeah it's a computed property it's a readable signal this is exactly where linked signal comes in linked signal is supposed to react to a particular source signal and then provide a value out of it and if we wanted to use that you would do it in this particular way you would use a linked signal let's have a look at what the linked signal looks like the linked signal has essentially two different variations the first one is you provide a computation right here that you can just pass as a function and that particular function would return the value whatever that value is another variation which i'm interested in is this one in this variation you actually pass an object in which you provide two things the source which is essentially a signal and then the computation function in which you return a particular value in this particular situation you also get the previous value if you want to change something from it and then also you can provide the equal function in both of these variations to identify what to look at when the signal changes or how to compare the previous value versus the current value. So I'm going to show you the simplest example in here. So if we use link signal, we can use an object here and we can say source. And here we are going to provide the source signal. In our case, this is this dot selected user. That's the signal. And then we need to provide the computation function. So here you can say computation and this computation function is supposed to return a particular value. In this particular situation, I'm saying whenever we have this selected user change, I just want to return the value of null. Okay, this could be shortened as well. So I could just go here and say null. And that means now this selected post is a writable signal. However, it is of a writable signal type, but only for null. That's not what we want. We want to be able to set this later on right here. And you can see that now it's crying that no, you cannot set a post to of type null. So here what you could do is here you can define the type of it. So here you can say writable signal. And here you can define the type, so post or null. And by default, we are assigning the value null. So whenever the value of selected user changes, we reset this selected post to null. But since it's a writable signal, I can also set its value later on as well. So now if I go to my application, you will see that I can click this. We set the value of selected post. We have the application working as before. And if I go to another user, you can see that the value of the signal selected post is resetted based on the selected user. This is exactly what we wanted. And the best part is that this is readable. We can automatically see that this is a linked signal and the source of this is selected user. So this is much, much better semantic when it comes to looking at the code and understanding what's really going on here. But that's pretty much it. You can now remove all of such effects that only need to do this with this particular link signal and the approach that I mentioned, or even you might have done this with computed in certain cases as well. But linked signal is the way to go in this situation. And you might also be thinking, what about HTTP calls? Don't we have something for that? There's a resource API or the resource signal coming in as well pretty soon in the code. In fact, that's actually here already. So if I try to do something like test equals to resource, you can actually see that this is coming from the Angular API and it is right here. But I'm going to cover that in the next video. So we have more room to discuss when to use it and how to properly use it. With that said, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comments as well. And if something can be improved about my videos, please feel free to share. I'm always happy to improve and take positive criticism, of course. And with that said, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next video.